Season 2 of Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human. This is Episode 1 of the new season, and my name is Ken Van Camp. I'm the narrator and flunky of this podcast, working under the whip of the author and ruler of this project, Kiki. In each episode, Kiki presents a dog's perspective on life and growing up in the human world. In this episode, we'll hear about how to exercise your humans. Will Kiki teach her humans the right way to play fetch? Please note we intentionally skipped Lesson 55 in our podcast because it was a mostly visual story and wouldn't have worked well without the pictures. So stay tuned to find out as we present this lesson from Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human. I hope you enjoy it as we start with Lesson 56, Exercise Your Humans, but exorcise those New Year's resolutions. Humans love to make resolutions and promptly forget them. Fitness clubs gain more new members in January than any other month and lose most of them in February. As man's best friends, we have a responsibility to love, protect, and invigorate our humans, including keeping them fit year-round. I pity the poor human who lacks a canine companion as too many of them suffer from physical and psychological afflictions, including heart disease, depression, and binge-watching old seasons of Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. As a dog, I attack these problems from multiple angles. I help to consume excess food, calm my humans when they're stress-eating, design a personal daily exercise regimen, and even provide a friendly reminder service to keep them on track with their goals. I don't consult them in goal-setting, but let's face it, if I waited for their input, they'd be rolling down the halls of the nursing home singing Copacabana in their tricked-out custom-made wheelchair before we even got started. Basic Exercise The Walk There are many ways to exercise, so I start with the basics. Thrice daily walks. Walking increases cardiovascular fitness, strengthens bones, and improves your chances of a successful getaway when Auntie Mildred comes to visit. Once our walk starts, I take breaks when my human gets fatigued by providing opportunities for sniffing, greeting neighbors, and stretching. Bending to scoop the daily missile improves flexibility and balance and provides a pleasing cologne when meeting new neighbors. Scooping poop also improves fine motor skills, have you ever tried to open a plastic poop bag? It's like playing a video game on expert mode while wearing oven mitts. More advanced exercise. Fetch. Once your human starts on a daily walking schedule, it's time to take the workout to the next level. I keep the emphasis on fun. And the most popular outdoor exercise for dog-loving humans is called fetch. This normally involves the human throwing some object, anything from a stick to a space-age glider, for the dog to retrieve. The trouble is that humans have found creative ways to put the entire exercise burden on us. Mostly it's in their choice of projectile. A tennis ball is the favorite, and at first blush makes sense. Old tennis balls are in ready supply, often free, have a long life, and bounce on almost any surface but I suspect human motivations go beyond these simple advantages. First, they bounce far, which means more running for the dog and less exercise for the human. Second, inexpensive plastic tennis ball launchers propel the ball even farther while the human expends less energy. With its help, a human can send a tennis ball hurtling into subspace orbit, suitable if you're vacationing on Virgin Galactic but not so good for an afternoon workout. Now, this all sounds very considerate, even altruistic, with the human affording their loving companion more exercise opportunities. But consider what the average human does while we're navigating the Starlink network in search of the ball. You know what I'm referring to, don't you? While we search a nearby asteroid belt, the human explores TikTok and OkCupid on their phone, a heavily exercised scrolling finger does not a fit human make. Set boundaries. Consider the escalation accompanying the game of fetch. Your human starts with short throws because 
as cheap as used tennis balls may be, humans are cheaper. They also start short to ensure the dog has the stamina for interplanetary travel. They gradually increase the throw until the integrity of the tennis ball is threatened by an impending core collapse supernova. As a dog, you need to do two things. Set some boundaries and be inconsistent. Every now and then, pretend you didn't see the throw and make that two-footed high-stepping all that punker fetch his own ball. The exercise will do him good. The fake out. While you need to encourage proper exercise for your human, it's also important to maintain the edge. When a smash burger serendipitously drops on the floor, you can nab it like a lizard on a succulent dragonfly. Quickly distance yourself from your predator, then slow down and let them catch up. When they get close, speed up again. Don't stop to eat until they give up. More exercise for them, more beef for you. Disclaimer. This story is not a substitute for professional medical advice. If in doubt, consult your neighborhood Labrador retriever, because nothing is more accurate than a lab test. Thank you for listening to this episode of Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human. I'm Ken Van Camp, and I hope you've enjoyed this performance. If so, please rate it and leave feedback. You can post feedback on our Facebook page or email. The addresses are in the episode description. We are dropping a new episode of Kiki's Podcast every weekend on all major podcast apps. Make sure you follow Kiki's Guide so you'll be notified as each episode becomes available. So, what will happen next? Will Kiki be able to fake out her humans and nab the next smash burger? Be sure to join us for the next episode of Kiki's Guide to Training Your Human and find out. Because dogs are people too, you know? Music